Yo, 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 what up, players? Hope all is well. Welcome back to another full PC build guide. I saw your guys' comments, 1500, 1500, 1500, and today we're gonna be working with a $1,500 budget USD, guys. All right, let's get into it. If you never built a PC before, you're in good hands, I got you. First, we're gonna go over all the parts and the prices and how much we paid for them. Then I'm gonna proceed to show you guys how to build the PC step by step. Second, we're gonna install the stuff we need, like Windows 11, our operating system, and all the drivers we need to make sure our PC is running great. Then at the very end, the fun part, we're gonna get down and dirty. We're gonna frag it up in all current triple AAA titles and it's a lot of fun you know how we do it here on the channel all right gentlemen and ladies let's get into it So first of all, the main component, our RTX 3080. They're so close to MSRP. We got ourselves a Zotac 20. We picked this guy up for $787. Ta-da! We're just gonna take a little sneak peek. There it is. Woo! Okay, more of that later. Next, the CPU we're pairing it with. The Ryzen 7 5800X is gonna accompany our RTX 3080 very nicely. Also, content creators. This is a six core CPU, 16 threads, max boost of 4.7 gigahertz. What it translates into is, I'm pretty awesome. Guys, we paid 298 bucks for this guy right here. He doesn't come with a stock cooler, so we had to pick one up. We're gonna be using the classic Cooler Master Hyper 212. If you want better cooling, then double the money, but this will satisfy you. So we're gonna put our AMD processor in a B550 chipset motherboard. This is an Asus Prime B550 Plus ATX form factor. We paid 136 bucks for this guy. For our RAM, guys, Corsair Vengeance, 16 gigs, 3600 megahertz. Again, classic, gonna get the job done. Look at that price, 60 something something. RAM is really affordable right now. Moving on to our storage, WD Blue 500 gigabyte M.2 SSD. It's awesome for the price. If you need more capacity, up it. A lot of you guys are probably gonna up it because you know games are pretty huge nowadays. All right, juice. We haven't used this power supply in a minute. We've been rocking EVGAs. But now we're gonna show NZXT some love. This is the C850 by NZXT. Gold rated power supply, fully modular, so cable management's gonna be a breeze. And last, our case, guys. The Corsair 400D Airflow in the white colorway. More on that when we unbox it. I'm really proud of myself and the team because we got three videos out in one week. Yeah! All right, guys. Well, let's jump into it. First, we're going to put our CPU inside our motherboard. And yes, guys, this motherboard is Windows 11 ready and Ryzen 5000 series ready. So we're good. We're going to get our motherboard out of the box and we're going to get our IO shield and our M.2 screws for our SSD. So if we take a look at our CPU on the bottom left hand corner, there's a little golden arrow right here, guys. And on our motherboard, there's an arrow on the top left side of our CPU socket. So now we're going to pull this lever to the side and all the way up. Then we're gonna line up the golden arrow of the CPU with the arrow on the board. And we're just gonna hover it over and let it fall into place just like that. Then we pull the lever all the way back down. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna drop it, have it not go in and then push it in because then you're gonna bend the pins. You don't wanna do that. Now we're gonna install our heatsink. So first what we're gonna wanna do is remove the fan from the heatsink just like that. So we're gonna be attaching these two pieces. We're gonna put one right here. It's gonna sit nicely in there just like that. And then we're gonna secure it from the backside so everything I'm using right now came with the cooler itself. Same thing for the other one. Let's put it into place. Should sit just like that. All right, cool. Heat sink is prepped. So now next we're gonna prep the back plate. So we're gonna need these parts right here and this. So if we take a look at our back plate, we don't want this side, we want this side. Okay, so where it's labeled AMD, we're gonna drop it in. It's gonna lay right into place. And then we're going to slide it all the way to that side. So here's the middle, away from it is where you want it. And now this thing right here, this side goes in the bottom. This is what we want on top. And we're just gonna line it up. And I got it in there and we're just gonna push it all the way in. There we go. So if we take a look, both of these clips clipped on on both sides and turn it around. We have our screw in the position farther away from the middle, which is the second one, not this one. And now we're gonna repeat the same thing for all four. So I put it in farthest away from the middle secured both of them farthest away from the middle should look like that easy now we need to remove this and this okay so then once that's off we do want to remove the back plate get this out of the way and we're going to be putting the new back plate and lining it up underneath our board so we have our new back plate underneath and now we're going to move on to another part and this is going to screw into all four screws do the same for the other three all right, nice, good job guys. Now I'm just gonna lay it flat. And it did come with this tool to secure them even more. So I'll go ahead and do that. Once my screwdriver stops turning, I'll stop. All right, that's good enough. Don't over tighten it guys. As soon as the screwdriver stops, then you're good. All right, awesome guys. So now we're ready to apply a thermal paste. So it comes with thermal paste. 
How much do we want to put? We're going to want to put a pea-sized amount in the middle of the CPU. So there you go, that will do it. And remember, you want to remove this first. We're going to line up all four points, four points on the board. And I'm placing it down evenly. Okay, cool. So I am pushing down on the screwdriver with a little bit of force so the screw could make contact and actually attach. And once I get it to attach a little bit, I stop. Now I'm gonna move on to the opposite side and get that one to attach a little bit. So I'm pushing it down with the screwdriver, have it screwing a bit. There, that one did a little bit. And now I'm gonna do the same for the other two sides. All right guys, so once we have all of them screwed in a little bit, finish screwing them in. So you can't over tighten it. We're just gonna keep going. And once our screwdriver stops, there you go, stop, and we're done. It has a safety. Same thing for the other three. Good job guys, it's on. So now we're gonna re-secure our fan. And we're gonna get this thing to clip back in there. That one's in, next one. That one's in. So this right here, this is a fan splitter. So if you wanted to add a second fan, you could and attach it right here. It also comes with the attachments you need. But we're only using one and we're gonna plug this fan into our CPU fan header. It's located right here. And it should look like that, guys. It's the fan header on the left. Next, we're gonna install our RAM. We have two sticks and we want them to run in dual channel. So we're going to put back the second and the fourth slots. We wanna make sure the indent of the RAM is lined up correctly. So for this stick, we want it this way. We're gonna put it in the slot. Once it's in the slot, we're then gonna push down with equal force our thumbs. Then you wanna make sure it goes all the way in on both sides and then this will clip back up. Same thing for the other stick, done. RAM's in. Next, we're gonna install our SSD. So this little guy is gonna go right here. So remember the little baggie we got out of the board? We're using this now. So we're gonna put one of the little standoffs right here. Cool, and now we can put our SSD in. So just gonna push it in and then lay it down and secure it with the screw that was also in that baggie. Done. Okay, now we're ready to put our motherboard inside our case. Ah, so let's open up our 4000D. This case comes in white and black. We got it in the white colorway. Boom. I'm gonna take both panels off. All right guys, so when putting a motherboard inside any case, you wanna make sure that first the standoffs inside the case are in the appropriate layout for your motherboard. And the standoffs inside this case are already in an ATX layout, so we're good to go. First, we wanna install our IO shield. It came with our motherboard. We're gonna put it in from the inside, and then we wanna make sure all four sides clip into place. There's two, and it's in. Make sure you put it in the right way, so the ethernet one needs to be on the right hand side. So when I put in the motherboard, I lay the case down flat, it's easier, but I'm gonna be doing a standing up so you guys can see it better on camera. I'm gonna put in the motherboard at an angle in order for me to line up all the ports of the motherboard with the IO shield. So once I have all the ports lined up, and that's when I lay down the motherboard onto the standoffs, and I make sure that it lines up with the middle standoff. It should look just like that. It's gonna fall right into place. So now we're gonna secure all the standoffs with a screw except the middle one. And those screws are located behind the case in the drive cage. And I'm gonna be using these screws. So we're gonna be screwing in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. I'm gonna lay down our case and screw in all the points. And here's our finished result, nice and secure. Now it's time to install our juice. 850 watts, gold rated. And you got your power supply right here. Fully modular, no cables connected to it. What are we gonna be connecting to it? I got you, one cable at a time, let's do it. So we're only gonna be connecting three cables to the power supply. First, our big 24 pin. We wanna get the side that's split into two. And it's all labeled right here, 20 plus four. In goes one and the other, that's good to go. Second is our CPU power cable. We wanna connect the side that's labeled PSU. I'm gonna put it right here, done. Last cable is for our graphics card. We want to again connect the PSU side to a PCI input. It's labeled PCI and it goes. Cool guys, so now we want to put our power supply inside our case. You always want to make sure that the fan is facing down and it's going to slide right into here. And these screws come with the power supply and secure it into place. Guys, 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 you hear that? You hear it? The ice cream man's here. Let's go get ice cream. <laughs> go, run, run, let's go, let's go. Where's my cash? I don't have cash. Oh, buy something. Oh. Wait, ask Big Daddy if he wants anything. You want anything? He doesn't want anything. Yeah. Dang. Someone buy me something. <laughs> Can I get a regular vanilla? I dropped ice cream on her face. <laughs> Sasha. Sasha, I got ice cream on you. Sorry. 
Before we start connecting cables, guys, this is totally optional, but I'm gonna be hooking up power supply extension cables because they look way better. Originally, this would hook up to the motherboard. Now, instead, I'm gonna hook it up to the extension cable, and this will hook up to the motherboard. I'm only gonna be using one for the big 24 pin, and for our graphics card, that's it. I'll link them in the video's description, along with every other part we're using for this build. All right, guys, so we have two sets of cables. We have our power supply cables, and we have our case cables, which connect our power button and all the other things on top of our case up here. We're gonna connect our case cables first. So we take a look at the bottom left hand side of our motherboard this is where we're going to connect our audio cable it's going to hook up right here only goes in one way audio text facing up that's good to go now over here on the right hand side of our board we're going to hook up our jfp1 cables i'm going to throw up a chart on the screen to help us first we're going to hook up our power led cables positive and negative positive is going to go on the left hand side and the negative on the right hand side it should look like that now the power switch goes right next to what we just plugged in on the third and fourth pin. This cable you can put in either way, it doesn't matter. Next, right under our power switch, we're gonna hook up our reset switch. Again, it doesn't matter what way you plug it in. And it's in, should look like that. Reset switch goes on the bottom third and fourth pin. Now if we move up here, we're gonna hook up our USB 3.0 cable. So on one side it's completely flat, on the other, we have this little part right here. We're gonna line up this part on the right hand side. Line it up straight so you don't bend the pins, it should look like that. Now the final case cable is the Type-C cable, but this motherboard doesn't support Type-C. Not all motherboards have Type-C, so we're not using that. It's fine, the computer's still gonna work, it's still awesome. If you did wanna upgrade your motherboard to, for example, a motherboard that already has built-in Wi-Fi and a motherboard that does have Type-C and whatnot, then I'll link one in the video's description as well as a second option. All right, now we're moving on to our power supply cables. So right next to our USB 3.0 cable, we're gonna hook up our big 24-pin power cable. We wanna make sure that this clip right here clips back here, guys, on the right-hand side. We're gonna line it up, so once we push it in all the way, the clip will be secured. Now let's move to the top left side of our board. Right here, we're gonna plug in our CPU power cable. Same thing as our 24 pin. We wanna make sure these clips clip in. And for here, they go in on the top side. So I'm gonna line them up straight and push them all the way in. Boom, and they're clipped in, good to go. All right guys, awesome. Last power cables for our graphics card. We'll move on to that in a bit. First, we gotta hook up the two fans that came with the case to our motherboard. So I'm gonna wire the fan cables to the back of the case. All right guys, so we're gonna be using a fan splitter. I'm gonna link it in the video description. So we're gonna connect one of the fans to the splitter the second fan to the splitter. So this allows us to connect two fans to one fan header on our motherboard. So we're gonna hook up the fan splitter to where it says chassis fan three. Boom, done. All our fans are connected to our motherboard. The fun part, guys, we're gonna start installing our graphics card. We already opened it up earlier, but now we're really gonna take it in. Boom, look at that guy. We're gonna power this with two A-pin power cables. We got ourselves a nice, clean back plate. This right here is gonna light up, guys. First, we wanna remove our second and third brackets to make room for our RTX 3080. Now we're gonna push back the PCI slot lever all the way back, and we're gonna line up our card with the PCI slot. And once it's attached, we're just gonna push in all the way, and then that lever will clip back up. And now we secure it with the screws. All right, the juice. In goes one eight pin and the second eight pin. Yo, look how good that looks, guys. And guess what? We're done. Now we just gotta install our Funko Pop. Now I'm gonna install an RGB LED strip. I didn't pick out a specific Funko, so we're gonna go to the shelf. Let's see what we're gonna throw in here. Yo, the perfect choice. I'm gonna throw in Gamer Mickey. Damn, look at that G. Yeah, he's got his headset and stuff. We're gonna put him right there. All right, time lapse. All right, guys, it's done. First boot up, plugging in the power cable. Bam, and it's alive. Woo, look at all that light, guys. We got the two RGB strips doing a lot of the lighting, but look at that RTX 3080. Now watch this, no panel, panel. Look at Gamer Mickey right there, just chilling like a straight G. Mini was yapping at him, bothering him, telling him, stop playing, stop playing. And he's just like, girl, please. Getting them Warzone dubs, right, Gamer Mickey? Yeah. All right, look, a lot of budgets have been covered on the channel. If your budget is higher or lower, check out the newest build guides up on the channel. Turn on bell notifications so you can stay up to date with all the future builds we're gonna drop and other cool projects. And we're gonna install stuff now and then we're gonna start fragging it up. Let's do it, guys.
All right guys, so first we're gonna install Windows 11 from a USB flash drive. I made a video on how to create one of these Windows 10 USB drives. It's linked in the video's description. Second, we're gonna be installing all the drivers we need. Third, we're gonna make sure our RAM is running at its rated speed. And then at the very end, we're gonna then download a game and start fragging it up. Let's do it. I'm gonna plug in our Windows 11 USB to our PC. Windows 11 still has silly issues because obviously this PC meets the minimum system requirements. I'm gonna go ahead and be installing Windows 10 for this video. I did make a video on how to create a Windows 10 USB drive for free, so you can then install Windows. So let's install Windows 10. All right, guys, so I turned off the computer, unplugged the Windows 11 one, and plugged in the Windows 10 one. Now let's boot it up again. Okay, next, install now. I don't have a product key. Windows 10 Pro, next. And there we go, it's working. This is how the Windows 11 one should work. So I'm gonna select custom. All hard drives or SSDs that you have hooked up to your system will pop up here, and you're gonna select the one where you wanna install your Windows operating system. We only have one SSD, so we're selecting that. So now we wait for it to copy all the Windows files to our SSD. While this is going on though, like I said, the last two builds, we installed Windows 11 successfully. Just imagine you're building your PC for the first time, like a lot of you guys are. Maybe you went down to Best Buy and you bought a Windows 11 USB, and then this comes up. Then you have to spend hours of troubleshooting to get it to work. Like, that's just that's just not right. That's not how it's supposed to be. You paid for this stuff and it should just work. But it's all right, homies, don't fret. Keep your chin up. All right, all files have been copied over. Computer's gonna restart. Yes. Anyways, where I just clicked yes, once you get to that screen, you could disconnect the flash drive because all the files have now been copied over. Now it's just a matter of clicking next, guys. This is Sasha. Hello. All right, guys. So I'm already connected to the internet through an ethernet cable. So it's giving me the option to download the Armory Crate app. I'm gonna select yes. This is a program that lets you customize the lighting inside your case. She doesn't like sitting down. All right, fine, get out of here. This is my boy. My boy is chill. Hi. Alright guys, so first we're gonna install the motherboard drivers. Every single website we're visiting in this video will be linked in the video description for your convenience. Drivers and tools. We're gonna select Windows 10 64. I'm gonna download the LAN driver. I'm gonna download the chipset driver. The audio driver. That's it. So I'm gonna drag these files to our desktop. We can't install them until we unzip them. So right click, extract all, extract. Do the same for the others. Okay, cool. So we don't need the zipped ones anymore. Delete. So one by one, let's do it. AMD chipset software, yes. Yes. Okay, now we're going to ASUS setup or a LAN driver. And the last one is our audio driver, ASUS setup. Yes. I'm only gonna uncheck the PCI device driver because we're using a NVIDIA card install. So these are all our motherboard drivers. Let's go ahead and get started on our graphics card drivers. So we're gonna go to this page right here. I'm gonna put a link in the video description. We're gonna download the GeForce Experience. This program is only for NVIDIA graphics cards and it keeps all your drivers up to date. This program also lets you record your gameplay and stream from it as well. So it's a pretty well-rounded program. I like it a lot. Open. Yes, green install. AMD chipset driver is done, but we're just gonna leave it alone because we don't want to restart yet. So once we're in our program, download the latest drivers. Express installation, yes. All right, cool guys, all our drivers are now installed. So let's go ahead and restart. All right guys, so now let's make our RAM run at its rated speed. But control I'll delete, task manager, performance. We go to memory, it's only running at 2666 megahertz, right? When our stick is rated for 3600 megahertz, we wanna get our money's worth. How are we gonna make it run at its rated speed? We're going to restart our computer. And when our system's restarting, keep clicking delete on your keyboard to boot up to the BIOS. All right, we're in. Let's go to advanced mode, AI tweaker, AI overclock tuner, click, change it to DLCP. Now, as you can see right here, 3600 megahertz. Our RAM is not gonna run at that speed. Exit, save changes and reset. Okay, so now let's check again. Control, delete, task manager. Performance, memory is now running at 3600 megahertz. Yeah, that's what we want. So now let's install a game. Tons of clients on PC. I'm gonna use Steam as the example. We don't need our drivers anymore, they're done. All right, so once you're in Steam, I'm gonna install a bunch of games. But let's get Siege going too. Done. And it's as easy as that, guys. Once your game's done downloading, launch it up, you're ready to start fragging it out. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, Apex Legends time, 1080p. Here's the settings we're rocking and FOV is set to 110. Let's get it. Great, everyone's down, I'm the last one. Woo, what's up baby, let's go. Holy crap. What the, why am I stuck? What, what, what just happened? The game's lagging like crazy, yo. What's going on? 
Really? Okay, guys, Apex performed great. We're moving on to the next game. All right, gentlemen, we're moving on to Cloud Warzone. Settings were rocking. 1080p resolution. Reflex is on enabled plus boost. Go to our quality settings, 120 FOV. And here's the rest of the settings. Let's get down to it. Ah. Oh, crap. Budgers. Get done! Fudge! Run away and don't look back! Oh, how's he up there, bro? Holy crap. No! Stay alive, champion. Come on, G. No! That match was fast and crazy. It was fun. All right, next game. All right, guys, time to play some Fortnite. Settings we're using 1080p. Here's the rest of the settings. And reflex on plus boost, as always. Zero build solos is what we're going to be playing. <laughs> I'm not about to die. <laughs> What did that guy expect was gonna happen? Hi. Oh, crap! Bro! <laughs> Am I watching? What are you doing? What is this? Can't believe I died to this guy. Huh? All right, next game. <laughs> Moving on to Valorant, 1080p. Reflex low latency on plus boost. Here are the quality settings. Fudge. No. Well, performance is obviously. I mean, look at it. All right, guys, next one. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Time for some Rainbow Six Siege, guys. 16 by 10 aspect ratio. FOV is at the max, and here's the graphic settings. Let's do it. Ah, let me Ah, Billy. No. Guys, I'm getting 350 FPS. I do not think it's enough. I want more. Bro, finally. No! <laughs> Why did I run out? All right, guys. So here's the strat. We got to injure the hostage, okay? So then when those little dumb nuts shoot him, we instantly win, okay? One, two, three. All right. What? Just die! Oh my goodness, Maz, you're a warrior! Good job. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up right there. The RTX 3080 packs a lot of power. If you guys wanna see how this build performs on other resolutions and other titles, tune in to Crater Benchmarks. We just launched that channel where we're gonna further test the builds we do. All right, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Crater Benchmarks link is in the video description. Go sub to the channel. Peace. <laughs>